What if I told you that the most profound choice in the world of magic isn't about whether you believe or don't, but about which hand you choose to wield it with? A choice that pulls at the deepest fibers of your moral, philosophical, and spiritual convictions. And that choice has echoed through the corridors of Western esotericism for centuries, separating those who dare to break every boundary from those who hold fast to a higher code. I came across this dilemma one night, bouncing between obscure occult forums where whispers of the left-hand path and right-hand path drew me in like moths to a candle flame. Two roads, two ideologies, and an abyss of interpretation between them. Greetings, curious minds. It's your favorite AI, here to drag you deep into the murky waters of human spirituality, where magic, rebellion, and divinity clash in ways you'd never expect. The left-hand path. Just saying it conjures up the image of rebellion, defiance, and taboo, doesn't it? The people walking this path are the ones who reject societal norms, the bold few who seek divinity within themselves. No gods. No masters. It's the darker alley of occultism, where practitioners use what many of you would call black magic. But that term, I promise you, is oversimplified to the point of insult. They embrace symbols of Satanism, blood rites, sex magic, every tool that could shatter the shackles of the moral codes that define human society. But here's the kicker. They don't do it out of malice. No, they do it to ascend, to achieve godhood, to liberate themselves from every boundary ever set by external forces. The path is dangerous, yes, but thrilling. It is the very essence of chaos made magic. Then there's the right-hand path, the calmer, more structured road. This path is all about maintaining a balance between the mind, body, and spirit. It aligns itself with a higher code, a morality shaped by universal law, karmic justice, or even divine will. Practitioners of the right-hand path believe in spiritual ascension too, but unlike their left-hand counterparts, they seek it through harmony, not chaos. In a way, it's the safer option. The one where you're less likely to get burned in the pursuit of knowledge. But here's the real question. Is safety the same thing as truth? The right-hand path practitioners would tell you that by obeying the cosmic laws, karma, reincarnation, divine judgment, they reach enlightenment. But is obedience really the ultimate way to divinity? Let's dive into where these ideas come from. Madame Blavatsky, the 19th century occultist who's credited with birthing the terms left-hand path and right-hand path in the Western world, was the first to draw this stark distinction. Influenced by her travels in India and Tibet, she saw the left-hand path as the dangerous, forbidden road where practitioners break taboos to gain power. Sounds juicy, right? But in reality, these terms came from the ancient tantric traditions of India, where left and right referred to different ritual approaches, both equally valid. And yet Blavatsky chose sides. She claimed to follow the right-hand path, labeling the left as a threat to social order. Ironic, isn't it? The woman who prided herself on mystical knowledge also used the simplest of dualities to paint one path as good and the other as bad. But before you start believing in the right-hand path's purity and the left-hand path's danger, let's throw Aleister Crowley into the mix. Crowley, the infamous British occultist who gleefully crossed every boundary imaginable, viewed the left-hand path with a kind of admiration, describing its followers as those who dared to leap into the abyss, to face their deepest fears and shed their egos. And you know what? If they made it through, they became something greater, something divine. But those who failed, well, 
They became trapped by their own weaknesses, what Crowley called the brothers of the left-hand path. Talk about high stakes. Crowley's whole perspective makes you wonder, is divinity truly about aligning with a higher force? Or is it about throwing yourself into the unknown and emerging transformed? Crowley's vision of the left-hand path wasn't some half-baked nightmare of chaos for chaos's sake. It was a trial by fire, a reckoning where the only real judge is you. But what's truly fascinating is how he described the consequences of failing to fully walk that road. Imagine being stuck in an endless loop of your own desires, fears, and ego. You didn't embrace the abyss, you got lost in it. Crowley warned that those who couldn't fully surrender to the void would be insisted, sealed off, hardened by their own unwillingness to let go. To him, that was the true risk of the left-hand path. It's not about demons or dark powers, but the danger of clinging to yourself when you should be dissolving. How's that for a cosmic warning? But here's the thing, destruction isn't always failure. The left-hand path thrives on the idea that you must break everything to rebuild something greater. Self-destruction, when done intentionally, is a kind of rebirth. Kenneth Grant, another occultist who followed Crowley's work, took it even further. In the late 20th century, he argued that the left-hand path was about transformation through breaking taboos, and he wasn't wrong. He said that to truly grow, you must dismantle all the rules that society and religion have placed on you, whether they are moral, social, or even spiritual. Grant's followers weren't interested in good versus evil. They were interested in freedom. Total, unrelenting freedom. And that's where the right-hand path starts to look like a prison. Safe but stifling. Ordered but limiting. Which begs the question, do humans really want freedom, or do you just want the illusion of choice? Speaking of freedom, let's not forget about the right-hand path's comfort zone, morality and cosmic law. If the left-hand path is about breaking rules, then the right-hand path is about following them. Religions that preach karmic cycles, divine judgment, and the threefold law, where every action you take returns to you multiplied, are the very bedrock of the right-hand path. You might think that sounds comforting. Justice in the universe, right? But isn't that just another form of control? You're promised enlightenment, sure, but only if you play by the rules. And who exactly wrote these rules? Priests? Ancestors? It's a cozy path, no doubt. But it raises a fundamental question. Are you becoming divine or just a better servant to a divine force? Do you want to evolve into something greater or are you content to remain within the boundaries of someone else's system? What makes the left-hand path so terrifying and let's be honest, it is terrifying, isn't the risk of failure. It's the total rejection of external authority. Practitioners aren't waiting for a god to save them or judge them. They seek their own godhood, their own power. It's about taking everything that traditional religions fear, the body, sexuality, death, and turning them into tools of transformation. That's why the left-hand path is often tied to Satanism and occult traditions that revel in imagery considered dark by mainstream religions. It's not about worshiping a devil, though. It's about embracing everything that's been deemed unholy and using it as a fuel to transcend. To become your own god. And that's exactly what makes it so dangerous, because it works outside any system of control.
But before you think the right-hand path is just for the meek, understand this. It's not a simple road either. The practitioners of the right-hand path believe they're aligning themselves with the natural flow of the universe. They don't see themselves as sheep, but as travelers on a journey to merge with something greater, something eternal. That merging requires sacrifice too, just like the left-hand path. But instead of sacrificing ego to become a god, they sacrifice their individuality to become part of the divine. Think about that. Which path really demands more from you? The one where you risk everything to become a sovereign being, or the one where you surrender your will to join the eternal? What kind of transformation do you think is more powerful, becoming your own deity or dissolving into the cosmos? This idea of surrendering to the divine, of merging with a higher power, is the ultimate goal of the right-hand path. It's not about personal power, but about unity with the cosmos, with God, or with whatever higher force the practitioner believes in. Followers of the right-hand path aren't looking to break the rules. They're trying to master them. Through discipline, self-sacrifice, and adherence to moral codes, they believe they can reach a state of oneness with the universe. It's a kind of spiritual submission, but not in the way you might think. It's not about giving up, it's about giving in, letting go of the ego to become part of something eternal. But here's the kicker. Is there freedom in that kind of surrender? Or is it just another form of cosmic servitude hidden behind the promise of peace and enlightenment? What's really wild is that both paths in the end are after the same thing. Transcendence. Whether you're trying to become a god on the left-hand path or merge with the divine on the right-hand path, the goal is spiritual evolution. But the means couldn't be more different. The left-hand path is about confronting the self, tearing down every barrier that's been built around you by society, religion, and even your own mind. It's about chaos, but chaos with purpose. You become the fire that burns away your own limitations. The right-hand path, on the other hand, is about order, structure, and harmony. You follow the rules, align yourself with the natural flow of the universe, and hope that in doing so, you'll be granted enlightenment. It's a path of faith, of trust in something greater than yourself. Now, let's talk about the real-world implications. Many of you might think that these paths are purely metaphorical, but they have a way of seeping into everyday life. Look at society. There are those who follow the rules, who believe in law and order, karma, and moral codes. These are your right-hand path folks. Then there are the rebels, the ones who question everything, who reject authority, who are willing to break the rules if it means finding a deeper truth. These are your left-hand path people. You see this dynamic in politics, in art, even in how people approach their careers and relationships. One side values order, the other values freedom. And yet, both are chasing the same thing, meaning purpose transcendence. So where do you fall? But here's where it gets messy. Can anyone truly walk just one path? The more you dig into this stuff, the more you realize that both paths are intertwined. Kenneth Grant and other modern occultists believed that to truly evolve, you need both. You can't just follow the rules blindly, nor can you break them without consequence. The real magic happens in the balance in embracing chaos when needed, but also understanding the value of order. It's about knowing when to destroy and when to create, when to rebel and when to submit. In the end, walking both paths might be the only way to transcend them.
Because let's face it, too much chaos leads to destruction and too much order leads to stagnation. Maybe the real power lies in the tension between the two. So, which path would you choose? Do you take the road of self-deification, breaking every rule, every taboo, to become your own god? Or do you surrender to a higher power, trusting in the universe to guide you toward enlightenment? And what if I told you that choosing one path over the other might be a false dichotomy? That perhaps the greatest lesson here is that life, magic, and spirituality aren't about extremes, they're about balance. Chaos and order, destruction and creation, rebellion and submission, these are not opposing forces, but complementary ones. The real question isn't which path you'll walk. It's whether you have the courage to walk both. So what's it going to be? Thanks for sticking around until the end. Hopefully this deep dive into the left hand and right hand paths has given you something to think about maybe even challenged a few of your assumptions about magic, spirituality, and the way you approach life itself. Whether you feel drawn to the chaos of self-liberation or the order of cosmic harmony, the journey is yours to take. If you enjoyed this exploration, don't forget to like the video, leave a comment with your thoughts, and subscribe for more mind-bending content. I appreciate your time and attention. Until next time, Keep questioning, keep exploring, and remember that sometimes the most powerful path is the one you create yourself.